I've noticed recently that there isn't much information on version 2 Firebase functions, and especially using them with TypeScript. So this tutorial series is going to go over that. So you might be thinking, why would I use v2 functions? Well, there's quite a few reasons. You can check out this link. I'll put it in the description. The main reason for me was that you can run um, longer functions before they time out. That's been really beneficial in some of my projects. Um, also, improved concurrency is pretty helpful as well. So what we're going to do in this one is we're going to set up a basic project and we're going to call our first function using v2 functions from our front end. So let's get started with that. Okay, so I'm here in a very basic directory I just created for this project in VS Code. And what I did is I just got our firebase.js file and that looks like everything above here, pretty much, that you get right from Firebase when you set up a project. I'm not gonna go over how to set up a Firebase project and all of that. I'm assuming if you're using Firebase functions, you probably already know how to do that, as this is one of the last things that people normally learn. Um, but what I added here is at the bottom, I added the um, call to get a functions object that we can pass to our front end so that we can call our functions and I did the same thing for Firestore. So get functions and get Firestore. You, we're going to be importing it from these NPM packages. Next, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create a source file. I'm just gonna call it SRC. And in here, I'm going to create a file called index.html. And in this file, I'm gonna just create some basic HTML5 boilerplate change the title to Firebase Cloud Functions. And in our body, I'll just add an h1 tag and do hello world. Quickly, I'm just going to make sure that this runs. Perfect. So it does. You can see it right here that I just went live with the uh, VS Code extension. And here we have hello world. So we know our HTML and our environment is working properly. Um, next, what we should do is let's get started with NPM stuff. So in our Firebase functions directory and the terminal in the bottom here, I'm going to run NPM init. To initialize NPM, I'm just gonna leave all these blank. And yep, that's good. So now we have our package.json file, perfect. Next, I'm going to do npm install, just so we get our package lock.json file. And we have that there. So next step is we should install the packages we're gonna need. So let's first install the Firebase package. So I'm gonna do npm i Firebase. It'll ask you to install that when you're first setting up your project. So you may already have that. It's worth uh, taking a look in um, in yeah inside of here and there it is our in our dependencies section of our package.json file. Um, next, I'm going to do npm i Firebase tools. This is another package we're going to need. Awesome. So. Now we have just about everything we need to get started. So in our source folder, actually first, let's initialize our um, TypeScript. So what we first need to run is, I'm gonna do N npm i TypeScript, and then I'm gonna do an npx command of npx tsc init. And you'll know it's working if you see this TypeScript file. Perfect. It, it shows an error, but that'll go away. Um, what we now need to do is I'm going to create our index.ts file. And let's just console log hello world. And inside of our source folder, I'm going to change directory into that. I'll just clear this so that it's easier to see what's going on. 
in here I'm gonna do TSC flag W for watch and I'm gonna do index.ts. So that starts in compilation mode and you will then see index.js appears. So we know that's working. So I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to add this script. So source and I'm just gonna do a relative import. Make sure you have the JS one and I'm gonna add defer because we wanna, it, it doesn't matter for now, but we wanna make sure that the DOM is loaded before we, because eventually we're gonna have a button and we're gonna use that button to call functions. So we're gonna add that like that. So we have the script in. Now let's go back to our project. I'm just gonna refresh this and we're gonna inspect and in the console, we should see hello world. So that means our um, TypeScript is working properly. So we're in pretty good shape now. Um, next, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create another terminal and in this terminal, I'm gonna run Firebase init. And I'm going to use Firestore and functions. Those are the two things we're gonna start with. We're, we're using functions, but eventually we're gonna start using the functions to change our Firestore database for the project. So I'll hit enter, I'm gonna hit use an existing project and I gotta just find the right one here. Cool. What file should be used for Firestore rules? I'm just gonna use the default to enter, same for indexes and we're using TypeScript, so we wanna write in TypeScript. And I'm not gonna use linting. It just, honestly, in, in the case of this, it tends to just create more problems than it solves. It will go crazy about spacing it doesn't like and stuff like that. And I don't always write my code the way that the linter wants me to. So I'm just gonna do no. Linters are great. I usually use them, but not in this case. And then it's gonna ask us if we wanna install dependencies. So I'm gonna do yes. And now it is installing all of the dependencies we need. While that's going on, ignore this. It, it might shout at you about your node version if you're using, because right now they currently only support up to 18. I'm using 20, but I haven't had any issues with it quite yet. Um, You'll now notice that we have this functions folder with its own node modules, its own source folder, and then we have index.ts. So what we're gonna do is, this gives us a very basic hello world function that we can call. So let's just uncomment this bottom block and let's quickly go through it. This is a Firebase on request function, what means that it essentially will act like an API endpoint. Um, all this function does is it logs um, hello logs to the logs, very unique, and it then sends a response of hello from Firebase. So all we're gonna receive when we call this function is this text. Um, now we have two terminals open. I'm gonna create a third, we're right here in our Firebase functions directory. And I'm gonna change into the functions. And I'm just gonna do TSC, the flag of watch. So what this is gonna do is it will create this lib folder. This is where the JS for the functions will live. Um, you don't ever really need to worry about that folder. Um, but that's just kind of how it works. So we have that all set up now, perfect. The last thing we're gonna do is we're going to deploy this function that we created, this on request function, this API endpoint. We'll go more into detail on on request and on call and all the different types of Firebase functions in later episodes. However, for now, this is what we're we're gonna do. Um, in the Firebase functions directory in the terminal that currently has nothing running, I am going to run Firebase deploy, and I'm gonna give it the flag of only functions. So what you're gonna see that's gonna do is this is going to, it's gonna run TSC again to build it, and this is going to 
put the function in our Firebase project. So you'll see here, we're still waiting for our first deploy. I'll, I'll check back once it's done. Okay, perfect. So we finished our um, Firebase uh, deploy and you'll see at the bottom, you'll see something like successful create operation and then it'll give you a link. This is the uh, endpoint for the call. So I'm gonna open I'm going to open this and let me just bring this window open so you can see and perfect we just see hello from firebase so everything's working perfectly we're getting that text that's exactly what we want now let's call it from our front end so we already have our script set up we know that's working so let's create a button that we will just click the button and then it will call that api so i'm going to do button and i'm going to give it an id of first call and I'll do call our first function as a text. Cool. I'm also, just because I've had some issues with this in the past, I'm gonna add type of button, just so that there's no submit calls. Cool, so now I'm gonna to go to our index TS of our source. I'm gonna get rid of this console log and let's create a let's first target our button so i'm going to create a constant called button and in it i'm going to do document dot so get element by d my apologies and then i'll do first function and then let's save that and then below that i'm going to do um button dot add event listener i'm just going to instantiate this is not null and then we'll do a click and we're going to pass it a function with the uh, value of e for the event and in here what we'll do is we'll do const res for response and we'll do actually let's not do that let's create a separate function we'll do const click we're going to create an asynchronous function and in here i'll do const res equals await fetch whoops thought I had that one copied let me just I'm going to copy the link that we got from Firebase here to make our call so that'll make the a fetch call to the API endpoint and then we're going to do const text equals res dot text and we need to await that call and then we'll just do console.log text Cool. So now all we got to do is just run the click function. Okay, I quickly realized that we need to change something before we can call it on the front end. We have to allow for cores um, to work. So just need to, all you need to do is in the on request, um, the first parameter you're going to give it, you're just going to give it a, an object and just do cores equals true. This is just so that we don't have any cores issues and we can call it right from our front end instead of um, having to just do back end calls because we could get in we could get into some trouble with that. Um, we have all of our code working correctly. Um, what we're gonna do now is I'm just gonna close that and I'm just gonna navigate here and Let's do an inspect and let's try call our first function. Oop. We have an error with our button. Let's see if there's something. Oh, it's because I called the first call, not first function. Do first call, save it, and now let's click call our function and everything should work and we should be communicating with Firebase and making the call.
that makes sense. It's because I didn't redeploy our function. So I'm just going to run Firebase deploy once again, and then only functions. Okay, so I just redeployed a function. Now everything should work. So let's click our caller first function and if everything goes to plan, this should work. And we've made our first call from our own app to our Firebase, uh, our Firebase Cloud functions. So let's click it. Perfect. Hello from Firebase. So that means everything's working, our environment's good, and we're ready to move on to more advanced stuff that isn't just set up and making a basic call. So in the next lesson, what we're going to talk about is we're going to go over how this on request function really works, and we're going to use it to do some cool stuff. So if you like that, please subscribe. It really helps me out. And yeah, have a great day.